<clears throat> All right. Uh, has has any one of you tried Cadence yet? Yeah. Um, okay. So you remember what we la talked about last time? Schematics. So today we're just gonna finish that. It's only gonna take um, probably 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll go to the lab and um, just see if Cadence is working for everyone. W we won't do any circuits or anything. Just start the software, see if the libraries are set up. Um, so yeah, we, we should finish early today. Right, so you remember the steps, it's TCH, and then we go to the directory we're working in. So we were here, and then finally we perform this command, and we start cadence like that. Okay, so this particular machine is not working. Let me try to connect to another swamp machine. They keep changing the security limits on these machines and I don't know what happens. That's better. <clears throat> so we finished simulation la last time. This time we're going to try to create a symbol out of the circuit and also try to measure power. We don't need this window. We need this window here. Remember that was the circuit we created. Let's open it again. Um, okay, so it's been locked because I forced exit it. Uh, so let me unlock it. Uh, you, you normally never need to do this, but have to do it now Sometimes when the software crash, it locks the file that you're working on and you can't edit it anymore. It locks it. So you need to go and delete some files that are the lock files so that you can edit it again. But this is very rare, only when the software crashes. Alright, so this was our circuit, our beautiful circuit. So, let's say I created a gate and I want to use that gate in other circuits. I can't use it in this form, right? Because it's, um, it's, it's not um, practical. What I need to do is I need to create a symbol for that gate. 
and then I can use that symbol wherever I want. How do we do that? We go to the menu, create, and cell view from cell view. All right. Now here, we specify our library and our cell, which is the cell that we want to create schematic of. And this is the particular cell. And we want to create a symbol out of the schematic, so we leave it as schematic here. And finally, we want to create a symbol, so this so so you never need to change anything here, uh, most of the time. You just press OK. Now here, it asks you on the left side of the symbol, which pins do you want? Uh, normally, the inputs are on the left, right? So let's keep leave the inputs here. Let's leave the outputs here. You can even place them on the top or the bottom. You can do any configuration you want. And finally here, you don't need to um, change anything. Just click on OK. And this is our symbol. So if we go into the library now, you can see I have two views now. I have a schematic and a symbol. So, if I want to use that symbol again, I would simply, okay, so let's try to use this symbol somewhere. But first of all, let's create a new schematic. So, let's create a sim schematic called circuit one. Create it as a schematic. Okay. Now this is circuit one. Now I press I to place an instance and I go here and I choose my and or symbol and I can put my and or in here. Okay? It's very intuitive, right? Alright, so I've placed two of my my and or gates um, by the way I wanted to tell you about the built-in gates which sometimes you need to use the end and or and all these gates you can find them here the thing about these gates though very annoying thing is that they don't have a symbol view so if you want to use them as a symbol in some circuit you can't you, there you can only you only have the schematic view so each gate you want to use it, you have to create a symbol for that, and it's um, it's a little bit annoying. What's even more annoying is that you cannot create the symbol inside this library because this library is read only. So you need to copy all the files into a new library and create the symbol there. So let me just show you a demo quickly because this might actually help you later on in the course, so you can use the the built-in gates. What you need to do is you need to create a new library um, let's call it my free or my 45 nanometer gates okay and it's gonna ask me which technology and I'm gonna tell it this one Okay, so I have it here, it's empty. I want to copy all this, all these libraries, all the, all the files in this library here. So I go into the copy wizard from here. Copy. From library, from this library into this library. And click on OK. Okay. 
All right, so if you go into this library now, it's the same one as the built-in one, except that you can actually create symbols here. So take the end gate. Also, we can delete some, uh, yeah, you can delete the cells you don't want. Yeah. So let me quickly create a um, symbol out of this. Also here, they don't use the built-in VDD and ground, so you have to connect them manually. That's another uh, another annoying thing. And you have to arrange them as, as you like. Okay. So I just created a symbol for the end gate that's, that was already built in, and I can use it now. But it's annoying because I have to connect the ground and, and VDD. Alright? That's what's bad about academic libraries like these compared to commercial libraries. Alright. So, back to my circuit here. I'm going to use an AND gate. I'm going to use the AND gate that I just created. I'm going to place it here. Oh. So this is the AND gate that I just created. You can, but you have to draw it manually, and it takes time. It because this is an academic library, and there's not much work into it, really. We we should be getting better libraries. We, we're we ordered the 28 nanometer library, and it should be here in the next month. When it's ready, we we can use it. Probably not this semester, but. Uh, for later. And I'm just connecting things randomly here. Um, I just want to create a Just a quick circuit so I can measure the power. Finally, I have to place the VDD and ground. So, place the VDD here, then the ground. And we're done. Well, actually, we still have the pins, so let's place these. Place A, B, C. And the output. All right, let's check it and save it. No errors. That's good, so let's simulate it. I have no idea what the result will be because this seems like a very messed up circuit. But I only care about measuring the power anyway, so that's what I'll be doing. And if you remember, I already had 
Oh, I have to set up the simulation again. Okay. So let's set up the simulation all over again. We change the simulator simulator to a spice D. And then we set up the temperature and all that other stuff. So if you remember, these have to be pulse, pulses, and at 1.1 supply. All right, we're almost done. We have to choose the analysis and let's simulate it for eight nanoseconds. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be zero. This should be eight. And the step size, let's make it 10. Uh, pico. Okay. Finally, we have to specify the outputs, and we do that on the schematic. And we have to save our state, so we can load it later. State 2. Alright, let's simulate it. Um, can everybody see that? I don't know, I'm not sure if the result here, uh, what to expect from the result because this circuit is very strange. But that's not the point. The point here is to measure power. Now, in, in other libraries, not in this library, um, actually not in other libraries, in, in other simulators, you might be able to go here, result browser, and here you can actually find the power. But um, you cannot in this simulator. Because um, remember when we changed the simulator here to H Spice, the default simulator in Cadence is this one, Spectre. And in Spectre, you could easily see the power from there. But in H Spice, it's actually a little bit more complicated. We have to write a script, a very small script, but we have to add a script. So you go back to your directory that you were working in and you have to create a text file spice file and 
only include one line in that spice file that's all you need so I've already have that file created you can call it where whatever you want I've called it uh, measure power and it only needs to have this line included and over here actually you have to change this value to the exact time where your transient analysis ends it, ha it cannot be different so if your transient analysis is from 0 to 8 here it should be from 0 to 8 so what this line does if, if you had taken 585 you would I'm sure you have used this line to measure the power in your circuit so um, so this line is just measures the power during transient analysis and prints it on the screen. So I just need that line and that file and that's that's it. And then in the simulator I go into setup simulation files. And in the stimulus files I click here and I add measure power. Okay? And I click on OK. Now I run the simulation again. Okay. Now how to find that power value? You have to look inside the output window here. We have to go up. Um, keep going up until we find that value. Okay, it's here. Average power from 0 to 8. Alright? This is equal to 31 microwatt. Um, which is... 31 microwatt is reasonable for such a circuit. There's also this one here. Total voltage source power dissipation. Do you know why this is greater? than the other one? What? Oh, this is, oh yeah, this is smaller, right? I thought this would be bigger. Total voltage source power dissipation. No, actually, it's smaller. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what what's the difference. What what the difference is? I'll check that out. Oh, maybe this one just measures it at the voltage sources not in the entire circuit maybe anyway this is the value that we care about the first one the average power okay but this is this was dynamic power right because the circuit was switching all the time suppose we want to use we want to measure static power what do we do how can we measure static power? Yeah, exactly. So this is what we need to do. We need all we need to do is go into this the stimuli, and for A, B, C, we change them from pulse into DC, and it could be either zero or one. Uh, okay, cadence just crashed. It doesn't normally do that, but when you SSH, it might happen. We were almost done, actually. This is disappointing.
so here I could actually load the state so I don't have to do all the work again but before I can load it I have to change the simulator to HSpice and my state would show up otherwise it, I wouldn't be able to find it in fact oh actually yeah it worked but you need to change the simulator here first actually this is um, yeah all right and what we do here is what we were doing was changing the inputs into DC. Let's have them all at one. It makes very little difference if they're one or zero, as long as they're not changing. Oh, I hit cancel. Yeah. All right, let's run the simulation again. Remember what the what was the value before? It was 32 milliwatt microwatt. 32 microwatt. So right now it should be much much lower than that. So, oh, I didn't add the stim, um, the measure power file. It should be added here. Okay, we run it again. Right, let's see. The average power right now is 0 0.3 microwatt, right? So it went from 32 microwatt to 0 0.3 microwatt, which is like 1%, maybe? 1%. So you can see that dynamic power is much, much bigger than static power. Except in the, in the situations where my circuit is very very big I have lots and lots of transistors in that case the leakage would add up from all the transistors it would add up especially for long periods of time I'm gonna let's um, let's actually demonstrate that I'm gonna simulate it for instead of 8 nanoseconds for 8 microseconds and see the effect of uh, static power. I think the connection today is bad. But anyway, the point is for short periods of time, if my inputs is changing a lot, dynamic power will dominate static power. For long periods of time when my inputs are not changing much, static power will be very, very dominant. Not dominant, I mean, but it will be very significant. So if this would just work, we would finish. Yeah. Um, what is the nominal, nominal duration of power? The what? Nominal duration. How long? Oh, nominal duration. Um, 
Um, it depends actually, it depends on your circuit. Usually it's for the amount of time it takes for your circuit to finish. For instance, uh, if your circuit is a multiplier and it takes four clock cycles to finish, you measure it over four clock cycles for the for the time it takes to finish. Yeah, for one complete iteration. But even this one is not representative of your power because it will only measure the dynamic power. Um, if you want to measure it, this measures the static power. The static power depends heavily on the time it sits idle. So you can measure it. Say it's in your processor and it only utilizes the multipliers only utilize like two percent of the time in your processor. So for the rest, ninety-eight percent of the time, it's seeking seeping power leakage. So that's that's how you can measure the leakage in the context in the context of your processor or wherever your circuit is is being used. Yeah, yeah. So I changed, I changed that value to microwatt, and I also have to change this value here to, uh, I'm sorry, to microsecond to yeah microseconds. Actually, I think you could use a parameter here so that it would change automatically for both places but you could experiment with that Next time I'll try to use uh, the network connection cable so that it's, it's faster because the wireless here is very spotty. Oh, it looks like it's done. So average power now, is it still the same? Oh right, right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're you're right. It, it would it's still the same, um, but its effect would be would be much worse because it's over time. Yeah, so the the energy would be a lot, but the power is still the same. Right. So, I guess we're done. So we're just quickly, um, if you want to, if you don't want to, it's fine. Just go to the lab and start Cadence and make sure that it, it's the libraries, you have the libraries configured correctly. If you've already done that on your own, then you don't have to go.